in the others. Let's take a moment to put ourselves into the presence of God. God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, today we enter into our preparations for Easter. Help us be ready for the fullness of new life that resurrection brings. Open us to what is possible with you. We pray for those who are more May cooler heads prevail and find a way to peace. May people in that region be moved to find the peace that only you offer. We finish one phase of democracy and are now entering another. May those who have been chosen find ways for the greater good. May they work for a higher sense of morality and concern for others. There's those among us who struggle with their health. You are the great physician. We ask you for healing. There are those around us who are seeking a new life. Give it to them even if their circumstances do not change. And make us aware of your presence as we worship and as we pray the prayer that your son taught us when he said, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen we're going to hear from uh my name is deuteronomy deuteronomy it means uh second testament um, our reading today is from Deuteronomy 26, chapter 1, um, verse 1 through 11, chapter 26. When you come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in an office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. And when the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. And when the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruits of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your, your God. And then you together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our psalm today is 91. It's on page 810 in the back of your hymnal. And the response will be the words from the response in the book, but a different tune. It goes like this. Grant us salvation, Lord, in trouble be our rescue. Everybody now.
gospel lesson this morning is Luke, the fourth chapter. It's traditional to start out the uh, Lenten season with the uh, temptations of Jesus. This is right after his baptism when he's been declared the, the Son of God. Um, and he sort of, uh, he has to go out in the wilderness to kind of sort out what that means. Jesus filled full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. The devil then led him up and showed him that in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he, the devil said to him, To you I will give this glory, their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I gave, give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, I will. it will be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to the Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels and concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Have you ever been tempted? There are a variety of, variety of temptations. Uh, there's a temptation to reach in and get that cookie. When you know it's probably not good for your diet and for your health. There's a temptation to make an excuse when you do something that other people might not approve of. There's a temptation to take it a little easy and to skip the hard part of work when nobody is watching. There's a lot of ways to be tempted. I looked in the, on the internet to see what the definition was, and the standard definition was that temptation is the urge to do, or the impulse to do what is wrong or unwise. I looked further and saw in Wikipedia the source of all things wise and wonderful, and it said, a temporary desire that may put in jeopardy a long-term goal. I like that. A temporary urge for something that may put in jeopardy a long-term goal. You remember the first temptation? Adam and Eve in the garden. We're not going to go into a deep dive because that's a rich text that deserves a whole uh, sermon on it. But the, 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 input, the, the idea is that human beings have been tempted like Adam and Eve ever since civilization has begun to want to be God. They were, they were wanted to have the same vision, the same ideas, the same knowledge, the same control that God has and we're always tempted to want to have control, to be God. That's been our temptation all these years, all these uh, millennia. Now we start out with temptation, a different temptation story that's going to have a different outcome at the beginning of the land. We start out with the temptations of Jesus. Jesus uh, has been 
declared the Son of God, that God spoke to him, and now he has to go figure out what that means. He has to figure out what his mission and ministry was. Jesus did not come with a script. In spite of what the radio preacher said one time, he said, the King James Version, if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. <laughs> that would be very handy, wouldn't it? See, what am I going to say in the Sermon on the Mount? Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> Jesus had to figure out as he went. So he went in the wilderness to sort it out. And, and he was 40 days without food. Now, uh, it probably was that he was able to drink and he did some things to kind of sustain himself. Uh, during that 40 days, he wouldn't have lived otherwise. But then temptation comes. Isn't it always the way? The temptation comes when we're tired and we're weak. It doesn't come with a warning label. Ooh, 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 temptation. It sneaks up on you when you're at your weakest. It comes on Jesus at the end of the 40 days. The first thing he does is says, turn this stone into bread. If I could do that, I could open a bakery in my place. <laughs> the temptation was not so much that he was hungry and he needed to be fed. The temptation was in his ministry. He, all his ministry, he'd be tempted to limit it to, to feeding people and to healing the sick. If he'd have done that, he'd have been a very popular guy and he'd have died an old man. But life would not have changed. If he made that his ministry, people would be healed for now. But they'd have to die. They would be fed for now, but they'd get hungry again. What Jesus' purpose was to show them, connect them to God. To show them the light of the Word of God. To give them life that was more than bread. He had to decide. And he said, life is from the Word of God. Life is from what God has given us and gives us life abundantly that's not just temporary but eternal no I won't do that then he gets offered the, the powers of all the, the uh, kingdoms of the nation now, that would have been very tempting for Jesus I imagine it was very tempting during his ministry because people were always wanting him to be king they were ready to follow him into Jerusalem and, and kick out the Romans. And that was the expectation with the uh, Messiah, that he was going to lead a revolution and throw out all the, the political powers, the powers that be, and that he would uh, uh, take over the rule. And it, that would have been very tempting because he could have done it with justice and mercy. He could have done it without corruption. He would have done it well. But at the end, when he was gone, somebody else would take over. And you know human nature would convert right back to what it was. It would have been a temporary urge. It would have taken away an eternal goal. And that is the kingdom of God. If he gives them the kingdom of God, which he proclaimed, then they would have peace in this world. Third thing he offered was that uh, uh, he said, come up to the top of the temple and jump off and let God catch you. You know, that probably was very tempting. Not so much jumping off the temple as letting God catch him. In the garden, he said, let this cup pass from me. I really don't want to die on a Roman cross. Catch me. But your will, not mine, be done. It would have been 
easy for him to sneak off in the night from the Garden of Gethsemane, gone into the country, never to be seen again. And he would have been a good teacher, a footnote in history, but he would not have overcome sin and death. He would not have offered people new lives if he had taken that short-term goal, that short-term murder, and skipped out on God's mission for him. God chose, or Jesus chose, to do it God's way, to be submissive to God and God's mission because he didn't want to do a temporary goal, a temporary urge, instead of an eternal goal. Now what has that got to do with us? Why do we start Lent with him? Because I want to suggest to you that we have the same temptations. We have a temptation to make bread our priority. To make our own comfort our goal. To make comfort to skip the hard parts. To, uh, to, to make sure that we're full and take our own priority first instead of the long-term goal, which is to shine the light of God into the dark places. We're tempted not to take over the world, but try to exert control everywhere we can. We just came through a series of times where we had elections. We wouldn't think of ruling the world, but we sure want people there who will think like us. So we elect people that will try to do what we want them to do, to exert control. Also, it struck me that the same urge is in the, the, the news on the Ukraine. Because when I saw it, I thought, like you, I thought, how do we stop this? How do we take control? How, how do we do that? And I realized that if we had done anything, bigger than what we did, it would have started in World War III. And even if we succeeded in stopping that invasion, it's a temporary answer to a permanent problem, which is the human dilemma of aggression and anger and wanting to conquer another people. Only God can solve that problem. We try to exert our control, and in that momentary urge, we miss out on the larger goal of the kingdom of God. We've never been tempted to jump off a building and see if God would catch us. But we have been tempted to try to skip the hard parts of life. When we're sick, we ask God to heal us. When our relationships are broken, we ask God to fix them. When we're confused, we ask God to show us the way. When things seem dark, we ask God for hope, and we should. But even if God doesn't do that, our faith should endure because it's eternal. I've met a lot of people over the years who God did not help them in the way that they expected. And they've given up on God. Let me suggest that the hard parts of life are actually where we learn the most. I've never heard of a hero when life was easy. It's through the difficult parts that we can show our character and prevail against the circumstances and learn things that we couldn't learn any other way. Jesus didn't skip the hard part. He didn't, couldn't skip the cross. And neither should we. With God, we can prevail. And by the way, God did catch him. He's called the resurrection. Life. 
You're going to be tempted every day to go for a short-term urge instead of an eternal goal, the kingdom of God. This Easter, let us think about it like Jesus did ahead of time so that we'll have the answer when temptation comes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Our affirmation of faith is number 881 in the back of the hymnal. Let us uh, stand so we show the world what we stand for. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Forgive us, we pray, 
free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take your individual petition to God. Here's the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to join the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those gathered here and upon this bread and cup. That make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We take the bread like he did with his disciples. And he broke the bread in order for them to participate in it, for us to participate in it, but also to remember his brokenness for our sake. We lift up the cup, asking God's blessing upon it, that it become for us a source of healing and wholeness, a source of forgiveness, a cup of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come humbly to your table, asking you to share the things from us that keep us from eternal life. Those temporary things that keep us from eternity. May we taste and know that you are good, that we are loved, and we are held secure. That it ours is peace and wholeness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
would one of those would be assisting? The journey to Easter has come. The journey to new life. Begin it at Christ's table. Please come. Our closing hymn this morning is uh, Where He Leads Me, number 338. Let us stand.
serve the Lord. 